I-21. Female recently inherited my mom's estate after her passing and began residing there. It's been a tremendous hassle dealing with emptying it out for sale while working full-time. Not to mention the complications with probate lawyers and my realtor. The icing on the cake has been dealing with the old woman living in the neighboring house. The first instance was when I realized there was likely something wrong with her mentally. She came into my driveway to talk while I was filling up a rented dumpster with belongings from inside the house. She went on and on about a plastic baton she had given to my little sister when she was a toddler. My sister is 13 now, so it must have been at least seven years ago. The old lady was desperate to give it to one of her nieces, so if I found it while cleaning, I was to return it immediately. All this fuss over a dollar store toy. I was annoyed, and she wouldn't stop talking, so I made an excuse to go inside. After I said goodbye and shut the door behind me, I could still hear her talking as if I were still standing there. Weird. A few days later, a truck came to pick up the dumpster. My car was in the driveway, but I wasn't home to move it, resulting in the driver driving over my lawn to reach the dumpster and leaving a tire track. It's whatever. I don't care. Later in the day, the old lady was pounding on my door. She was furious and screaming that there was a tire track on her lawn. But, as I said before, it's not on her lawn, it's on mine. Nowhere even close to the property line. She insisted it was her lawn, and that I needed to take care of the track ASAP. Okay, whatever, I'll fix it. Anything to get her to stop screaming and away from my front door. The next day, I arrived at the house to find that she had dug up the area where the tire track was and planted grass seeds. Maybe she felt bad for yelling at me? I dismissed it. Although I found it weird that she was doing lawn work on property she didn't own. There were a few other small odd encounters, and the fact that every time I stepped outside, she immediately came out to try and engage with me. But I saved the weirdest for last. As I mentioned, I was living in the house my mom left, specifically in an upstairs bedroom. I live alone. One morning, I came downstairs and found an envelope on the first step right by the front door. Inside was a card signed with the old lady's name. She wrote how she was sorry about my mom, as she had also lost her mom at my age, which made her feel connected to me, along with some other I'm here for you type sentiments. But I did not put this card here, and it was not here when I went upstairs to go to bed. The only explanation is that she had come into my house at night while I was sleeping and left it on the stairs. Who knows what else she touched or did while inside my house while I was asleep. Very creeped out. I am not going to confront her about entering my house, but I will be avoiding her like the plague. I'm moving into an apartment and will soon be rid of her. I do know I am never leaving a door unlocked again. Edit. For all the commenters saying I am being insensitive to a mentally ill person, no, she does not have dementia. Just a loony 65-year-old who's cool with entering someone's house when she feels like it. I'm not obligated to be nice to someone who committed a crime, violated my space, or screamed in my face. Mental illness or not. You can't diagnose someone you've never met off a Reddit post. So, I'm not exactly sure if it belongs here or not. I'll remove it if it does not. But for now, this is one of the creepiest moments of my life. So, I live in a commercial building in a pretty conservative country. Underneath our flat, there's a dental office and the owner is in good terms with my parents. So my dad arranged for my front teeth to be pushed back without braces, as they are just mildly outwards, not too much. So the owner who's the head dentist decides to do it with retainers. Since I live in the building, I usually go after all his usual appointments are done, so that I don't have to book appointments in advance and he can see me for a longer time. I usually went there with a guardian or someone from my dad's office, which was one floor above our apartment, but this particular day, everyone was busy. Usually, a female dentist used to see me, but today nobody was there except the head dentist. Not even the receptionist was there. 
the entire place was empty, and it was around 9 p.m. and I was alone with this guy. So, I know this guy to be a little touchy-touchy with other dentists, but he hadn't tried anything with me, so I didn't think of myself to be in danger or anything. But for some reason, as soon as I entered the room, I felt a certain uneasiness I can't quite explain. He is super trustworthy, as he is like this ultra-religious person, and my parents know him and stuff. Also, I'm in my building. What's the worst that could happen, right? Anyway, so when I go, he is tightening up my retainers and is checking if it's fixed when I feel him pushing his penis against my leg. And I'm like WTF, and thought maybe he didn't realize it. But then he changes the position of the chair and starts doing it more. And at this point, he is almost on top of me as he tries to check my teeth. At that moment, I was just scared, because it occurred to me that I'm completely alone here, so nobody could hear me scream. And he had dental stuff in my mouth, which was weren't letting me talk, let alone scream. The entire time, I was just trying to move away from that position, but he wasn't letting me. And then finally, when he goes away, I just said goodbye and left. Now, as I said, I live in a very conservative country where you don't really talk to your parents about anything sexual. I learned about the birds and the bees online, so when I asked by my father why I don't want to go for my next session, I couldn't say anything aside from that I was uncomfortable with the male dentist. I think he understood what I meant so he never sent me there again, and I still have outward teeth because I'm traumatized and creeped the heck out. I've always been afraid of the dark. More than that, I've always been afraid of the curtains being open at night. The big black void of the backyard from the kitchen window is unnerving, so I make it a point to close the curtains before nightfall. That said, the first incident happened about a week and a half ago. Now, our neighbors across the street had had a lot of company lately, so the sound of car doors and people talking and stuff like that had been a common thing the past few weeks. They'd only lived there for about two months, and since they moved in, lots of people came and went. However, this usually stopped when it started to get dark, at least on most nights. So, when I started hearing sounds akin to doors opening and closing outside, I got a little nervous. I started thinking that maybe the neighbors were just having a random night visit from someone. Some people do, I do sometimes, so I kind of put it out of my mind. I just continued watching videos with my husband. After about an hour, he fell asleep and I kind of rested my head on his shoulder, still watching videos. Until our dog, Penny, rose her head up and started growling. This dog is a master alarm. Anytime she hears something outside that doesn't seem right, mostly just at people showing up unexpectedly or people talking outside or something, she will perk up and growl or bark. Whenever she does, I go on high alert, especially at night. Our other dog, Clementine, isn't so quick to be aggressive. She's still a pup, only seven months old. She had no reaction to this except to sit up and try to play with Penny while she swerved away from her, ears and tail pointing straight up and alert. I immediately lifted myself from my husband's shoulder and got out of bed. I should note that for the past couple of weeks, We've slept in the living room as we are having our bedroom and bathroom renovated on. Our mattress is on the floor between the couches. Just behind us is a small hall that leads to the laundry room and one of the two back doors on the house. On this back door is a window with a small white curtain. I hate that door. The curtain on it is very see-through. I try my best to avoid it at night, but as it's the most readily available window, it was the one I went to to check and see what Penny was barking at. When all I saw was darkness, I checked the front windows and saw nothing. After a while, Penny calmed down and took her place at the foot of the bed next to the couch. Clementine, too, took her place sleeping in front of the windows behind the couch that's in front of our bed. I put it out of my mind, thinking maybe she was having a senior moment, she's 12 years old and she has had moments where she's barked at nothing. When I heard the sound of rustling just outside of the back door behind me. Outside, there's a lot of tools, a workbench, 
and a couple of old washers we took out of the shed not long ago to try and get rid of. There's also some lawn chairs that make a very distinct sound when pushed across the concrete patio. This is the sound I heard. I know this sound because when the dogs are outside, Clementine runs into them and even drags them around a lot. So much so that I'll sometimes just stack them in the shed to avoid it. Penny immediately starts growling again and even barking a couple of times, stirring my husband. I was frozen and did not want to get up and check. So I shook my husband and told him what I'd heard. Both of us got up and checked the back door window by us and the large picture window in the kitchen, as well as the window on the back door in there. Eventually, he resorted to grabbing a crowbar from the tool closet inside and peeking out of the kitchen back door. There was nothing there. He sighed and told me it was probably just the wind blowing those chairs around. They weren't exactly heavy, just those cheap, white plastic ones some people have, and it actually kind of was windy that night but I still couldn't shake the feeling that that wasn't it. Cut to about two nights later. It was a Friday night and my husband had gone out with a work friend. I was alone, browsing on my laptop when all of a sudden I heard that rustling again. Only this time, it wasn't just the sound of the lawn chairs on the patio. This time, it sounded like someone was in the shed. The laundry room behind is connects directly to the shed which is actually a small carport or garage type room that we just store all of our excess belongings in so anytime a sound is made there. If you're in the living room, you can hear it quite clearly. This time, not only Penny began growling, but even Clementine who never growls began to follow suit. This made me nervous. I called my husband and told him I heard something in the shed and he immediately told me he'd head home straight away and to keep the doors locked. I ran to each door, making sure they were all locked. When I passed the kitchen, I caught a glance at the picture window in the kitchen. I'd forgotten to close the curtains, so they were open and in the darkness of the backyard. Against the dim glow of the light in the alley behind the fence, I saw something move. I froze. I had no idea what to do. I didn't know how long it'd be before my husband got home and I didn't want to go near the window to shut the curtains for fear of whoever was out there seeing me. I hid behind the corner by the kitchen, with Penny and Clementine at my legs as though guarding me, both still growling. I clutched my phone to my chest, trying to remember if the back door by the kitchen was locked or not. I ultimately decided I could easily crawl through the other opening to the kitchen without being detected as it was out of the way of the window and lead straight to the back door. I got on my hands and knees and slowly crept my way to the opening. At least from there I could clearly see the lock and maybe wouldn't have to go all the way to it at all. This was my biggest mistake, or possibly my saving grace. The front door window has a clear view of where I was, and it didn't occur to me until I heard the security door knob jiggle. I froze and snapped my head to face the front door window. In the light of our porch light, I could clearly see someone peering in at me. If it was my husband, he would have just come in straight away. Instead, whoever it was just stared. I couldn't see their face, as the security door kind of blurs the image through the window. Either way, I could tell it wasn't my husband. I didn't think, I just dashed down the hall into our bedroom. Messy though it was with wood, paint cans, and rolled up carpet all over the place, I knew I could at least hide in the in-suite bathroom and lock the door, while also locking the bedroom door behind me. I immediately called the police, who had me stay on the line with them while they sent an officer out. My husband got home first, practically scaring the shit out of me when he knocked on the bedroom door. I came out of the bathroom and unlocked the door and threw my arms around him. Not long after, the police came but there was no sign of anyone outside or even in the alleyway. I didn't sleep at all, neither did my husband. He just kind of laid there with a the crowbar next to him. Our dogs were restless, too, heads and ears constantly perked up, peering around them like they were listening for any indication of an intruder. Cut again to two nights ago. After the whole thing with the police, I'd had a hard time sleeping. 
so I've pretty much ruined my sleep schedule by staying up until my eyes could literally not handle being open anymore. That night I was watching a movie, trying to focus on pleasant, happy films to put my mind at ease. When without warning Penny began howling and barking viciously with her head stuck between the curtains of the windows behind the couch that's in front of the bed. My blood ran cold and I stood up to peek outside. The neighbors across the street were all standing in the yard, talking quite loud. But something didn't seem right. They all seemed to be looking in my direction, and Penny was not letting up. She was barking so viciously, I almost didn't recognize her. I'd never seen her so worked up. I couldn't get her to stop no matter what I did. So I eventually just pulled her from the window. She wouldn't have it. She jumped on the chair and shoved her head between the curtains of the window by the front door and continued. My husband woke up and instantly went into protective man of the house mode. He grabbed the crowbar from the floor beside him, walked over to the window and looked out to see what she was barking at, telling me to stay behind him. When all he saw was the neighbors, he got a little irritated. He'd been as stressed as I was since the whole police incident and was finally getting some decent rest. Still, despite what it may have appeared to be, I told him maybe we should call the police again. Seeing Penny that way left me uneasy. The whole situation just seemed off. At first he was reluctant, saying they wouldn't do anything if nothing had even happened. As he said this, he went paper white and his eyes burned into the picture window in the kitchen behind me. I turned around and saw three figures climbing over the fence into the alleyway out of our yard. I immediately called the cops again and my husband tore out of the back door while I begged him to stay inside. I didn't know if those guys had guns or what while all he had was the crowbar. The police were there in seconds it seemed. Fast for them to be honest around here. Luckily, they caught up with all three guys who ratted out my across the street neighbors. Apparently, according to the officer we spoke to, these people had warrants out for their arrest on multiple offenses. One was wanted for possession of drugs with intent to sell. Two of the other guys had outstanding warrants for assault, while the girl that lived with them was wanted in the next date over for armed robbery. It was a goddamn den of criminals. Apparently, they'd been watching us as well as our neighbors to the left and right figuring out our schedules for when things go quiet or when we are at work, trying to find a good time to break in and steal any valuables. Yesterday I spoke with a neighbor on the left. She's a very nice lady. She's lived next to my family for the past 14 years. She told me she thought she heard someone breaking into her home a couple of weeks prior and immediately installed a security system. I can't help but think this must have deterred them from her, so they moved on to try and rob us. Our other neighbor hasn't had any trouble, which kind of makes me nervous when I think about it. It's been quiet since, though. The house across the street was pretty much searched, and the rental company emptied it out this morning. It's eerily dark over there. While I have always had a weird fear of open windows at night, I'm kind of grateful I forgot to close the curtains that first night. If I hadn't seen that first guy in the backyard, maybe I wouldn't have tried to crawl to the kitchen door and notice the one at my front door. If we had closed the curtains on the night they all got caught, maybe my husband wouldn't have seen them all in the backyard then either. Either way, I'm just glad it's all over and that no one was hurt in the end. I feel a lot safer now. Maybe I'll finally be able to get some sleep. Someone sketchy is walking around my neighborhood, which is in a semi-large town 44k, and we don't live in the best neighborhood. Not sure what they're up to, but I thought I heard someone walk by me a few times, but couldn't see anyone I was outside gardening. Lol. It was 12.30 a.m. Then I took a call from my daughter. In order not to wake everyone we have thin walls and neighbors close by, I started walking away from the houses towards this large empty lot. As I'm walking, I thought I heard a noise, so I turned around and started heading back towards my house and saw this shadowy figure holding a super tiny light of some kind. 
As soon as they saw me turn around and start walking back in their direction, they ducked behind this big bush. I made a comment to my daughter that someone moseyed on behind this big bush real quick in front of me, but still thought maybe they lived at the house the bush was in, and that they were cutting through to a back door or something. But a few seconds after I said that to my daughter, the person hopped out from behind the bush in an almost exaggerated fashion and started walking directly towards me. Not sure what the hell that was all about, but I didn't stick around to find out. I cut through the empty lot at a diagonal to get back to my house. Update. I was really on edge after that, but trying to finish moving some flowers I had already pulled. I was working on the front side of my house. The house is on a semi-busy street and the same one the person had come from before hopping into the bush. As soon as I was done with the front, I went to the side of the house because I had about ten plants I was relocating. I was already thinking that whoever it was before, if it was me they were after, wouldn't know I had moved to the side and might be more comfortable walking right by again. About ten men after I'm on the side, I see a guy walking really slow down the sidewalk directly in front of my house. He scared the shit out of me because he was only about 10 feet from me when I saw him, and I even said he had scared me to death. He stopped and said, well, at least I got a chuckle out of you then. Then he proceeded to ask how I was doing tonight. I was polite but short and just said I was doing good thanks. I didn't even ask how he was doing in return because it creeped me out that he had stopped to talk to me at this time of night. He then continued walking to the end of the block, which is also where our lot ends we are on a corner. I have some hedges that run parallel to the sidewalk and go from the spot I first noticed him and continue to the end of the lot. The guy keeps walking until he has passed the hedges, then turns around to look at me, but given the location of where I was, it would have been hard to get a clear image of me. He walked across the street to where a school is, then turned around on the other side of the street, so he was now facing me, and he just stood there and stared while smoking his cigarette the light I thought I initially saw. He stood there for a few minutes, and I went in to get my son to come out with me while I finished. He is 19. When my son came out, the guy had already walked past, then back again, and was heading back for a second time. My son stood in the middle of the sidewalk and just kept an eye on him. He passed us and got to the end of the other side of the block. He turned around as if to see if my son was watching him still he was. He stood there staring at us for an eerie length of time. Then he finally walked away. So I had started smoking when I started upper school at the age of 12. Not good I know, but hey-ho, you can't change the past. I wasn't addicted, but smoked at break times at school, or when I was out with my mates after school and at weekends. My mom didn't smoke, but my dad did, so she never noticed the smell on me. So one day me and my friend, a fellow smoker, went into this little outhouse in the backyard of an empty properly to have a cigarette. Now we called these little outhouses middens, they were basically really little small buildings at the bottom of the back garden that were likely at one time outside toilets. So we were stood in there smoking and chatting when this guy, crouching down, comes into the outhouse. At a guess I would say he was around 50. He was either of Pakistani or Indian origin, and he said in a very strong accident, Oh, I saw you girls come in here and I threw you must be smoking. So he got out a packet of cigarettes and said have some of these. He stood right next to me and basically ignored my friend. Naive 12 year old me was thinking this guy was so cool and I happily took a few cigarettes out of his packet and stuffed them in my pocket. Then he started saying you are a very naughty girl aren't you and he put his arm around me. I was a little bit creeped at this point but didn't say anything. He then just kept saying ooh you naughty girl and he grabbed me really tight and tried to kiss me, but I moved my head and got a big sloppy kiss on my cheek. At that point I shouted really loud and told him to get off of me. I must say he did crap himself at that point then, probably worried someone would hear me and then he would get into trouble. 
He left sharpish, and I felt really shook up. I had two older male friends who I was so close to, and were like older brothers. I went and told them what happened straight away, and they went crazy and made me walk around with them for hours to try find him. Needless to say, we didn't find him. I saw him again once more, and typically I was on my own. I had walked my friend home about five to ten minutes away from my house before heading off home myself. I had grown up in that area so didn't feel unsafe on my own, whereas my friend had only moved to that area a few weeks earlier so didn't feel as confident. So I'm walking home, and it was early evening, and I saw him coming towards me. He walked past me and said, oh, it's you naughty girl. I felt really creeped out, and even more so when I looked behind me, and he was just stood staring at me. I then heard loud footsteps behind me, and I didn't even look to see if it was him, I just ran all the way home. I never told my mom as I didn't quite know how I would explain why I had been in the outhouse, and obviously I didn't want her to know I was smoking. It was only years later I realized how much of a potentially dangerous situation I was in. You hear so many stories of young girls being abused and killed, and I do realize how lucky I was. Also having a 13-year-old daughter now myself also makes me realize that even just walking in the street in broad daylight does not mean you are safe from sickos and perverts. Back when I was in college and I finally got my own car. My usual Friday nights were taking my cousins and my brother to my old high school's football games since we were all fans of the sport. The games would usually end by 9.30 in the evening, and after we got done with our late night fast food joint run, the time would be 10.30 p.m. Whenever I drop someone off at their house, regardless of what time of the day it is or how much of a rush I am to go somewhere, I always make sure to sit in my car to wait until I see them enter their house. My mom and dad were the ones who always engraved this in my head, because doing this ensured that they actually got home safely. My mom's fears were that they didn't have a key to get inside, and they were locked out of their own home. And far worse, there was someone menacingly hiding behind the bushes or against the wall far out of our sight. So the time was around 10.30 and I pulled up to my last cousin's house. The passenger side of my car that my cousin is sitting in is facing directly in front of his house's driveway. So as my cousin is gathering his stuff, I glance over to my aunt's house to see if there is anything or anyone around. That's when I see my uncle is underneath my aunt's car doing some car work, or as I thought. Before my cousin steps out of the car, I take a closer look and I now know that this man is not my uncle. I pull my cousin back into the car and tell him, Look, who is that? He is frightened at seeing this, and I tell him to call his dad to make sure that this wasn't him. As he does, I pull the car to the other side of the street just in case things go bad. His dad comes out as fast as he could as do I, and now he and I are confronting the man underneath my aunt's car. The man is way underneath the car as his legs are the only part of his body that isn't under the car. As it turned out it was just a homeless man who had a few drinks as he was slurring his words as we kept on trying to tell him that he needed to leave. I know that the man meant no harm, but I tell this story to people as a cautionary tale on why you should always make sure to scan the area and wait for your family members, friends, or whoever you are dropping off to make sure that they enter their house safely. I have a story along these lines, however a bit more sinister. It's actually my dad's story, as it happened to one of his lifelong close friends. This close friend was dropping off their elderly mother one evening several years ago. He did what any good person would do, and after dropping her off, waited for her to enter her home, and then drove away thinking everything was and would be fine, ready to call it a night. Turns out, a person who was addicted to drugs had broken into her home. He was looking for anything he could sell or pawn, but when she came home, it must have surprised him and he panicked. He ended up beating her to unconsciousness and proceeded to set her on fire and burn her to death while she was still alive. 
It was obviously a horrible and traumatic event and rocked everyone to their core. My dad's friend never really recovered. He's still in their friend group, however understandably spiraled down deep into alcoholism and depression. He's a shell of what he once was. He's a ghost these days. When you look into his eyes, he's just so. Haunted. It's absolutely jarring to see the person he once was and what he has become. To this day, any time I open the door and walk into a darkened foyer or drop a friend off, I wonder. I wonder and worry about what might lurk behind that door in the shadows. I realize it's a low probability to have that kind of incident happen, but to this day, I insist my friends text me when they are in the door and home safe. I get chills even then. Proof that monsters are real and lurk in the shadows of the most unexpected places. So here's some background on my situation. Two weeks ago, this guy moved in next door to me. My apartments are set up so that there are only two apartments per floor in the building. We live on the ground floor, so we have a shared small backyard area with all the ground floor tenants. My neighbor, let's call him BFG Big Fat Guy, has never introduced himself to us, my boyfriend and me, but we had a conversation with his father when he was moving in. BFG is around mid-30s and is an early retired veteran due to disability. Last Thursday, my boyfriend, a friend, and I were in our living room eating dinner. Our living room window has access to the shared backyard. While we were chatting, BFG comes out of his apartment shirtless, visibly drunk, and walks along the backyard. As he makes his way towards my apartment again, he stops in front of our window and starts banging on it, pointing at me. Once my boyfriend realized what was going on, BFG quickly made his way back into his apartment. Again, like I said, I have never met this dude once. Later that evening, he continues to bang around in his apartment. This continually freaks me out. I kind of have a fear that someone is going to break into my apartment and overpower me. I have this fear because I'm small and barely weigh anything, so him starting this and banging around really freaked me out. Friday morning comes, and thankfully, nothing is out of the ordinary. But today, Saturday, as I was leaving for work, a car parked next to mine was parked pretty much sideways in the spot with all doors wide open. I didn't have time to investigate since I was on my way to work, but my boyfriend did, and he found BFG's wallet and car keys. So obviously, he is drunk and has no control whatsoever. But I am definitely shaken up. My boyfriend is going to be out of town for the next week, and I'm scared about living next to him alone. I don't want to live next to him anymore. I did report him to the office, but who knows what the outcome will be. I was probably 14 or 15 at the time. I was alone in the house when I heard the doorbell ring. My front door has two thin glass panes on either side, so you can see who's standing there though they can see you and quite a bit of the inside of the house, unfortunately. This guy's already seen me so there's no playing dumb, and I can see that he's an absolutely massive black guy just waiting for me to open it. Now, opening the door was probably wasn't smart, but it was daylight and the neighbors next door are always hanging around outside so I figured I'd be fine. I reluctantly opened the door only to behold this man in his mid or late twenties giving me a kind of dejected look on his face as he says, and I quote, Hi, I just talked to the neighbors over there, and they sent me over here. I was just wondering, would you be willing to adopt me? Now I'm absolutely floored by this and don't respond. A few seconds go by as I struggle for words and glance over at the neighbors in annoyance before he breaks character and says, Nah, I was just joking around with you. I'm actually here to offer you the chance to purchase this revolutionary cleaning product. I imagine this guy thought that such a tactic would put me at ease, but all it did was confuse me and increase my discomfort level by a few notches. Something that bears mentioning at this point is that this man did not look like a salesman. 
He looked like some random guy trying to do the world's worst impression of a salesman. He had on blue jeans and a checkered flannel shirt with a tie stuck over it. It looked ridiculous. We had the following exchange. So, is this your house? No, it's my parents. Are they home? No. Well, that's okay. You can just buy it as a gift for them. Let me give you a demonstration. At this point, he takes a nondescript clear plastic container with some kind of substance that looked like water inside it and sprayed the windows. He then took out a rag and wiped the window, saying, See? Doesn't that look great? Imagine how happy your parents would be to get this gift from their son. I don't remember how much he was selling it for, but I do remember that I did actually have enough money on hand to purchase it. I wasn't about to do that, though. So I insisted I had no money, to which he gave a forced laugh and said, Come on, I know you've got money for this. I insisted I didn't, but told him to come back and speak to my parents in a few hours. And, seeing this wasn't going anywhere, he grabbed my hand with an iron grip and started shaking it. It wasn't hard enough to be painful, but I knew this guy could completely obliterate me if he wanted to. After looking at our handshake in disbelief, I looked up at his face and saw that he no longer had that phony salesman smile. He had a pretty deep set frown and was looking at me coldly as he said, Well, God bless you, before letting me go and walking away. Of course, he never showed up to the house again to take me up on the offer to sell to my parents. Perhaps he figured my parents wouldn't fall for the scam or they'd be mad that he had engaged their kid when he was alone in the house. My friend 25 female from college told me a harrowing story that happened to her and her friends in high school. She is from Buffalo, NY and often went on camping trips to local, upstate campgrounds. When she was a senior, her and four of her friends went to a campsite fitted with rows of cabins on the water that people could rent. As the sun went down, the girls noticed that their neighbors a few cabins down a group of guys similar in age were playing music and grooving around the campfire, drinking beers. One of the guys asked them all if they wanted to join. When they got over there and started hanging with the guys, everything seemed completely normal and they were having a fun time. As the night progressed, one of the guys there started to get blackout drunk and eventually pulled out a revolver that he said belonged to his dad. He started waving it around and playing with it. This obviously freaked everyone out, his own friends included. Eventually, he started pointing the gun to his head and laughing, while his friends were yelling at him to put it away and how that wasn't funny. The girls at this point were fairly disturbed and told the guys that they should get back to their cabin and said their goodbyes. When they got back to their cabin, they all talked about how freaky that was and expressed concern for the drunk guy. They then moved on to other topics of conversation and forgot about it for the time being. A few hours later, sometime in the middle of the night, they heard a loud bang coming from the direction of their neighbor's cabin. Shortly after this, a brigade of cop cars showed up to the scene. One officer came to my friend's cabin and started asking them questions about the cabin they visited earlier that night. When my friend asked the officer what happened, he explained that the kid had shot himself in the head in front of his friends. They weren't able to discern if it was unaliving himself or accidental. My friend to this day still has PTSD over this incident and explained that she rarely goes camping anymore. So to start this off, I am going to give a description of myself and my friend. I am a 17-year-old 110-pound girl and my friend is a 19-year-old 90-pound girl. This will be somewhat useful later. Also, I apologize for my grammatical errors. So this happened about three months ago in the beginning of the summer. I was at my best friend's brother's apartments here were seven people including me. But anyways, so like two weeks prior to the occurrence, there had been this grown man who was harassing my friends trying to break in, threatening to kill them, and just overall being a mess. Of course, they called the authorities, and they didn't do a thing. 
So my friend Rabbit and I were going to go out to her car to put her two-month-old's car seat in the back seat because she was getting ready to take me home. We were in the bad part of town and we already knew about this guy, so I had a taser and Rabbit had a knife. We were walking back when we thought we saw the man waiting for us, so we got our weapons out ready to use if need be. Turns out it wasn't even him. However, as we were walking in we had to walk past his apartment. As we were about halfway down the hallway, we heard him scream from his apartment, Oh, I got you now. And he started chasing us. This man had inhumane speed. I've never seen somebody so fast. As we both turn around because we realized we locked the door before we went out, he attempts to stab us multiple times with about a seven-inch blade. We both somehow dodge the ballade, and she falls into the wall opposite of me, and I fall into their neighbor's door. This man is like six foot seven, and a lot bigger than the both of us. I go to turn on the taser while still attempting to dodge this man's unnecessarily big knife, because I am not going to let me nor my friend die. He notices this and then starts acting all cool with us and tells us that he could have killed us. We have to act like we are okay with him in order to get inside the apartment. Afterwards we get inside and we both break down and hug each other, then go to make sure everyone else is okay, especially Rabbit's baby. Her brother and my friends were already on the phone with the cops, and they literally told them that they thought we were being killed, and saw him not only with the knife, but a gun as well through the peephole. The cops take over 45 minutes to get their question us and act like we are stupid, and don't know what we are talking about didn't even go question or detain the man acted like he was the victim and treated us like we were the criminals for wanting to defend ourselves if need be and were basically useless and only left us feeling pissed off. I had my boyfriend pick me up because I didn't want to be there anymore and I cried in his arms for 20 minutes. The look in that man's eyes is one I will never forget. It was pure insanity and hatred. He had no good intentions, and I believe the only reason me and Rabbit are alive today, and I am able to tell this story, is because he saw we were going to be able to somewhat defend ourselves. I still can't go in public places without some form of a weapon, and this man has emotionally scarred both me and Rabbit and our friends having to hear our screams of pure terror as we thought we were going to get killed. So, to the man with the unnecessary big knife and inhumane speed, and to the useless cops, I hope I never see you again. So this happened I want to say around the year 2012 or 2013. Me and my mom lived just ourselves in my grandmother's old house. After she had died in 2009, it was just us. My mom had the habit of leaving the house and visiting family really often since my entire family lived in the same town. Sometimes I would go with her, and sometimes I would just stay at home and play games on the PC. One night in particular that I was home by myself. I can't remember if I was listening to music or on the game, but it was almost 11 at night and I had gotten a knock at the door. At the time we had four dogs that lived in our house and all of them started going insane barking. This wasn't abnormal, as they would bark at the neighbors if they saw them out of our living room window getting out of their car across the street or heard anyone within a five-mile radius talking. My bedroom happened to be at the front of the house with a window directly facing the porch and the door. Because of that, I was able to take a slight look to see who it was, and it wasn't someone who I'd seen before. My mom never had people come by the house often, but there have been a few that came over to talk to her or see if she was home. Not usually super late, but I ran with it and didn't think twice about it. I thought it was just one of her co-workers coming by to see if she was home. I opened the door and I was greeted with a guy I'd say early 40s wearing a brown work jacket and light blue jeans, so he definitely looked the part of someone who was from the factory. I opened the door to see what he wanted, and he said something along the lines of, hey, how is it going? And some small stuff here and there. It's hard to recall too much of the small talk, but he did ask something like, is anyone else around, or... That might not be entirely what he said, but it did skate those lines. I was still under the impression at the time that he was a guy that my mom knew from work. So I told him that, 
Yeah, right now I'm the only one here. My mom went to my cousin's house, but she should be back soon. He said some other things, like his name I think, and he said that he had recently moved here from Indiana, and he was going around to each neighbor's house saying hi and introducing himself. I was like, yeah around here that could get you shot. Since it's not normal to show up to someone's house to introduce yourself, let alone this late at night. He told me that, yeah where I'm from in Indiana it's normal for people to do that. He said his goodbyes and left. The car that had been running and sitting outside the driveway on the road looked like a decently new car, so I didn't think much of it at the time. I figured I wouldn't really have anything that the guy couldn't already afford so as far as being a burglar I figured I was in the clear. My mom got home about 30 minutes to an hour later and I told her about it. It wasn't really until her reaction to what happened that it really sank in. I'd never seen that guy again after that encounter and I wasn't sure what he was after. My mom told me that I was lucky that maybe the guy didn't barge in because all four of the dogs were right there with me each of them pretty protective. They all kept an eye on the guy as we talked. Maybe he was telling the truth, and it was just a harmless encounter out of the ordinary, but I still think about it from time to time. Like what exactly was he doing there? Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.